Old Testament temple didn't really divide Jews and Gentiles, but in this period, Herod's temple did divide Jews from Gentiles. So you had uh, what was the outer court in the Old Testament now divided into the court of Israel, the court of women on a lower level outside it, and then out beyond it, the new outer court, Gentiles couldn't go beyond this point. They would be killed if they were caught going beyond that point. We noted in an earlier lesson that Paul addresses this in Ephesians chapter 2. Well, this is something that Paul had precedent for because Jesus also addressed this. And we see this in Mark chapter 11. Gentiles were now segregated from the heart of divine worship, which is against the purpose that God had declared uh, even in Solomon's prayer in 1 Kings chapter 8. Money changers were there in the outer court. Um, money changers were probably necessary on some level to change all the local currencies, to make conversions for the sake of the sacrifices. But they were a distraction. This was the only place where the Gentiles were welcome to worship. And this is apparently pointed out by Jesus in Mark chapter 11. Matthew and Luke adapt it some. They leave out some of Mark's wording. But in Mark, it seems pretty clear. Because Jesus is crying out two texts from the Old Testament as he overturns tables in the temple. One is from Isaiah chapter 56 and verse 7, which says, I'll bring foreigners to my holy mountain, give them joy in, in my house of prayer, for this house shall be called a house of prayer for all the nations. Gentiles were supposed to be welcome there in God's house. Jesus quotes that, the house of prayer for all the nations <coughs> fits God's purpose from the beginning. But then he quotes another text. This one is from Jeremiah chapter 7 and verse 11. It's about the den of robbers. In the context, Israel is crying out, God won't punish us. I mean, God can't judge his own temple. They're crying out, the temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord is in our midst. And God says, do you think that you're free to commit all these crimes, to, to break my Sabbath, to steal, to commit adultery, whatever, to commit all these crimes and then come into my house which is called by my name, and say, we are free to do all these things. Has this house, which is called by my name, become like a den of robbers in your sight? I will do to this house, which is called by my name, as I did to Shiloh, declares the Lord. Shiloh is where the tabernacle was when the Philistines came and destroyed it, as uh, we know from archaeology as well as from the Old Testament. So, Robbers' dens. A, a robber's den was where robbers stored their loot. It's where they thought themselves safe. Jesus says the temple is not going to be like that. Just as Jeremiah prophesied judgment on the temple in his day, Jesus prophesied judgment on the temple in his day. Just because something's a religious institution or just because something's religious is not going to shield it from God's judgment. And Jesus was pronouncing judgment on a segregated religious institution. Jeremiah smashed a pot in the temple to symbolize its imminent destruction. Jesus, even more dramatically, goes around overturning tables. Hmm. I wonder if this could have any implications for segregated religious institutions today. What do you think? <laughs>